Good day, Grade Tools. Welcome to the next lesson in mathematics. I hope that you've had a good day so far and that you're ready to carry on with learning about differentiation. So we started, well, we ended with the question that I asked you to do, which was to find the derivative of f of x is equal to 1 over x minus 2 using first principles. And we got as far as telling you that f of x, we worked out that f of x plus h is 1 over x plus h minus 2, because wherever you see an x, we now have to put x plus h. And we now got this horrible looking thing. And now we need to solve it. OK, so let's get going. Okay, so I'm just going to change color. Um, okay, so we agree that we always have to write the limit as h tends to zero unless we actually take that limit into account. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, fine, this stuff here is all being divided by h, right? So I'm going to write this all as one big fraction. I'm going to go 1 over x plus h minus 2 minus 1 over x minus 2 divided by h, okay? Do you agree that looks a little bit easier to on the eye, okay? It feel, for me, it feels like I can actually understand what is going on because now what I need to do, do you guys agree that I have to get a common denominator here? So I'm going to say, okay, fine, limit as h tends to zero. And the only way I can get a common denominator is to multiply the two brackets, okay? So what I'm gonna, I mean the two denominators, somebody would have x plus h minus two and x minus two. And do you guys remember how to do this? Let's just remind you, if you've got one over three plus one over four, okay, you do the common denominator of them, which is three times four, which is 12, right? Then what do you do? Three goes into 12 four times. Four times one is four plus. Four goes into 12 three times. Three times one is three. That's how you do it, okay? So we're gonna do exactly the same thing. We're gonna go x plus h minus two goes into this denominator and leaves you with x minus two. Then we're gonna take this x minus two and multiply it by the numerator, so it becomes x minus two minus bracket. Please remember to put your bracket in. So x minus two goes into the denominator, cancels with this, and you are left with x plus h minus two, okay? All still divided by hydrogen, well, hydrogen, by H. I've just been teaching chemistry. Okay, so now let's neaten this up. So it becomes the limit as H tends to zero, and let's neaten up the numerator. It becomes X minus two minus, and this is why we have to worry about it. You've got to go X, then it becomes minus times the plus is a minus, minus H, minus times the minus is a plus two, all over X plus H minus two, X minus two. And then while we've been at it, let's just fix this. When we divide by something, what do we need to do, okay? It's easy to tip in time, so we can times it by one over H. Okay, that's really what we're doing. So this becomes the limit as H tends to zero, and it's neaten this up. X cancels with X. The minus two cancels with the plus two, and you're left with minus H over X plus H minus two, X minus two times by one over H. So do you agree that H is cancel? And what are we left with? Left with the limit. And remember what I said to you, do not get rid of this until we actually do this. It's minus one over X plus H. Oh, sorry. Sorry, let's carry on. X plus H minus two, X minus two. Now we say, but hang on, we can pretend we're taking the limit as h tends to naught. What does this thing become as h gets so small that a minus will be naught? Well, then it becomes minus 1 over x minus 2, x minus 2, which is minus 1 over x minus 2 all squared. Sure. Okay, so it wasn't too bad. We just had to take it in really baby steps. 
okay really really baby steps and just work it out nice and slowly and remember that you have to remember your limit is h tends to zero all the way through until you actually get actually do the thing where you let h tend to zero and you can remove it okay right now let's do this question okay so this is also a typical exam type question by the way that was a typical exam question typical so these are all old exam paper questions i haven't just um, pulled them out of my finger <laughs> so what they want you to do is find f dashed of x if f of x is equal to x squared minus 5x plus 6 over x minus 2. now when you get to the university and if you choose to do math one and the module that you do includes derivatives and differential functions, then there is a rule for dividing um, things like this. Okay, it's called the quotient rule. But since you guys are not at varsity, you don't actually have to worry about this, which is wonderful. So there's an easier way to do it, and that is to factorize. So what we're going to do is we're going to factorize the numerator and see if we can cancel anything. So let's have a look at this x squared minus 5x plus 6. Okay, so do you agree that our factors of x squared are just going to be x and x, right? It's x and x because it's 1 and 1. This plus tells me the signs are the same and they're both a minus. And then we have to look at our factors of 6. And our factors of 6 are 6 and 1 and 3 and 2. So it has to be minus 3 minus 2 because minus 3 times minus 2 gives me 6. And minus 3 plus minus 2 gives me minus 5. So that's 3 and 2. Ah, and now it looks a lot easier. Okay, so now we're talking about the rule of differentiation instead of first principles. And I'm going to get to that in a second. So what we can do if we go back to this we've got f of x is going to be x squared and it's going to be x minus 3 x minus 2 all over x minus 2 that cancels so now we've got f of x is equal to just x minus 3. Now it doesn't matter if we use the rule for differentiation or use first principles, this is really easy to differentiate. Okay, so now what is the rule? The rule is this, the derivative of xn is equal to nxn minus 1. Okay, now that seems complicated but it's not really. Let me give you an example before we carry on with this. Let's say we've got 2x cubed okay okay now let's make it even easier let's make it even easier x cubed okay now it looks like this x n okay so what do we do we bring the n to the front three we leave the x and then the top bit the exponent becomes n minus one so three minus one is two that's how easy it is Okay, that really is how easy it is. So if we get back to our example here, we derive, we find the derivative of this, okay? So f dashed of x is equal to, now remember, there's an implied one up here, okay? So what does it become? It becomes one x, the one minus one, and then this doesn't have an x, so therefore it goes away. But what is one minus one? One minus one is zero, so this is 1x to the 0, but anything to the 0 is 1, so this is just 1. So f dash of x of this thing is 1. And we know that the gradient of x minus 3 is 1 because this is a straight line. If you remember, y is equal to mx plus c. There you go, that's the gradient. The gradient is 1, and we've just shown it using differentiation. Okay, now we're again going to use this rule. I'm going to do it on a slightly more complicated example, okay? We've got, find the derivative of f of y if f of y is equal to the square root of y. Okay, so this requires that you know your exponent rules, which is that the square root of y is exactly the same as y to the half, y to the half. Therefore, f of y is equal to y to the a half, right? So then following this rule, if dashed of y is going to be, what do we do? You take that number, you bring it to the front, so it becomes a half 
y and then we take the dump in minus one to the half minus one. Okay, so then what does this become? It becomes a half y to the minus a half. But guys, what does a what to the minus a half mean? Y to the minus a half. Do you agree that anything to the minus means what? Let's say, uh, let's say a to the minus one. What is that? It's one over a. A to the minus two is going to be one over a squared. Remember that this minus here means one over or Basically, it means take it to the other side of the dividing line, the quotient line. So therefore, this is the same as a half times by 1 over y to the half, which is the same as 1 over 2y to the half. And that is your final answer. If you really want to, you could actually write this again as 1 over 2 square root y. Especially if they ask you to leave the answer in third form. But this is actually the final answer there. Okay. Right. Ah, now we've got an interesting question. We've got f of z is equal to bracket z minus 1, z plus 1. Okay. Now, again, since you're in grade 12 and not in varsity, you don't know the rule for this. There is a product rule for it. But since you haven't been taught it, we need to sort this out. We don't know in grade 12 how to uh, find the derivative of products. So what do we need to, um, of two things we multiply together? So what do we need to do? We have to multiply this out. So we go f of z, let's try again, z is equal to, and I'm really hoping you see the difference of two squares, but if not, z times z is z squared. z times one is plus z. That is minus z minus one. So that there is z squared minus one. Okay, now it really doesn't matter whether using x's or z's or y's or p's or q's, it's the same thing, okay? So if we, if we want to find f dashed of z, we take whatever the number is at the top, we bring it to the front, so it's 2z, and we subtract 1 from that number, so it becomes 2 minus 1. The constant goes away, so it becomes 2z, okay? Guys, you don't have to show this. I'm showing you this because obviously I want to make sure that you guys understand it, okay? But you guys don't have to show it, okay? Ah, a nice challenging question. The type of question I like. Yes, I know, I'm boring. Such a nerd. Okay, so now we've got x cubed plus 2 square root x minus 3 all over x. So great tools, what you need to do is you need to separate it out. You need to say, okay, fine, well, in that case, y is equal to x cubed over x plus 2 root x over x minus 3 over x. Okay, so that makes this a little bit easier because that just cancels that and you're left with x squared. Plus, do you agree this is 2 x to the a half, because that's what the square root means, times by x to the negative 1, because I'm taking it up to the top, so it's easy to work with, minus 3 x to the negative 1. Okay, now all we have to do is neaten that up. We don't like two x's in one big thing, so it becomes x squared plus 2x to the negative a half. Why? Because when you have the same base, what do you do with the exponents? You just add them, so you've got a half minus 1 is minus a half, minus 3x to the negative 1. Okay, and now the rule is this, whatever the rule is, we apply to the dy by dx, we apply to every single one of these. Okay, so dy by dx is equal to, now we're just going to look at this one. Okay, do you agree? You take that number, you bring it to the front. So it's 2x, and you take that number and subtract 1 to the power of 1. Okay, great, 1 plus 2, just write the number down. Whatever this number is, you bring it to the front. So it's going to be minus a half x to the, and then this, what do we do? We subtract one. So it's minus a half minus one, minus three. Okay, minus three. Then whatever this is, we bring it to the front. So it's minus one x to the minus one minus one. Okay, so what does this become? It becomes 2x 
plus times the minus is minus. Two cancels with two, and we're left with one. X to the minus a half minus one is minus three over two. Minus times the minus is a plus three X to the negative two. Okay, so if we really wanted to, we have to make this look nice. We could write this as 2x minus, now remember that this means 1 over. So it's 1 over x to the 3 over 2 plus 3 over x squared. That minus means that it goes under the quotient line and it's still squared. And that there would be my final answer, d by d dy. Okay. Uh, sorry, not d by dy. Um, dy by dx. And guys, I hope you understand that if dashed of x is equal to d by dx, which is equal to dy by dx, it all means the same thing. It means the first derivative. We are deriving with respect in this case to x, okay? Now they've given us this, y is equal to the square root of x cubed plus one over three x cubed. And they obviously want us to find y dashed of x. So that's another way of writing it, y dashed of x. Okay, so let's do that. Again, we need to get this in the format that we understand. So the square root something means to the half, right? So do you agree that means y is equal to x cubed to the half plus the whole of this is under the quotient line so it becomes 3x to the 3 to the negative 1 okay so do you agree this is x to the 3 over 2 okay plus 3 to the negative 1 times by x minus 3 this minus 1 belongs to everything inside the bracket okay now that is the y. Now we want to find dy by dx. So we take each of these things separately. So let's look at the first one. What does the first one say? The first one says x to 3 over 2. So we take that number and we're taking it to the front. So it becomes 3 over 2x. And then what do we need to do? We need to take that and subtract 1. So it becomes 3 over 2 minus 1 plus plus we've got this, okay? So three to the negative one stays there, it's one over three. One over three is three to the negative one. The minus three goes to the front. So now we times in minus three, x, and then this becomes minus three minus one is negative four. Hmm, okay. So let's all bring it all together. So it becomes three over two, x to the third, 3, and, 3 over 2 is 1 and a half. Minus 1 gives you a half. Plus times a minus is a minus. So actually, that's a minus. Let's erase it. That's a minus. That cancels with that. And then it's just x to the negative 4. Okay, so if I want to actually write it officially as beautiful, it's going to be dy by dx is equal to, this means the square root. It's 3 over 2 square root x minus 1 over x to the power of 4. There you go. Sure. Okay. So what are the rules? The rules are obviously the basic rule, which we know that if you've got the derivative, if you've got the function, you bring the into the front and then you subtract, okay, from the exponent. But now, what are the more important rules? Okay, the more important rules are that you break the sum down into bits that you can factorize. Okay, I mean, not factorize, that you can differentiate. So you can do that nice and slowly, then you're fine, and you just have to obey your exponent rules. So grade 12s, right at the beginning of the year, I started teaching you exponents and exponent rules. And now you can see why this is so important. Not the beginning of the year, beginning of the section of the sessions, these sessions. So I would suggest that you go, if you don't know your exponent rules, go and study them. And 
or, or go and watch the videos that I've done on the exponents and exponent laws, or go onto the Hadotute, I mean, not Hadotute, oh, gee, sorry, the Turnable platform. Go onto the Turnable platform and go and look at it, okay? Um, in fact, let me just show you quickly. Okay, let me just show you. Okay, no, let's not do that. Um, let's go to, yeah. I oh, know I won't be able to. Okay, I'll show you tomorrow. To remind me and, okay, you can't remind me. Remind me tomorrow and I will show you where you can find the stuff on the Turnable platform to help you go through the stuff that you need to know, okay? Remind me to do this and I will do it for you. Okay, right, if you don't remind me, don't worry. I think I'll try and remember. Um, yeah, I'll make a note. Okay, now, now that we've learned how to derive and we've learned how to apply our differentiation rule and know how to differentiate from first principles, by the way, differentiation from first principles, there's always a question, guaranteed, minimum six marks, usually six to ten marks, on um, using first principles to differentiate something. So learn it, make sure you can do it, it's easy, it's just tedious. Okay, so now differentiation and graphs. So we can use differentiation to find things on curves and okay, we can use it eventually to draw polynomials as I mentioned before. So the first question is, it says find the equation of the tangent to the curve, y is equal to x squared at the point 1, 1 and draw both functions, okay? So the whole point is, is that f dashed of x which equals dy by dx. Remember we've said that that is the gradient of the equation or line of the graph at a point, okay? Which is also effectively the gradient of the tangent at that point. If you think about it, let's just draw this graph. If you got y is equal to x squared, the way the graph looks, okay, it's like this. This is obviously a rough graph. So y equals x squared when x is 1, y is, okay, let's make it 1, well, 1, 2, and 3. And this will be 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, okay. So when x is 1, y is 1. When x is 2, y is 4. So basically the graph is going to enough. Of course, it doesn't go through there at all um, because remember, I can't actually draw graphs on the digital pad and pad. So let me just try. Okay, it's not too bad actually. So that's your, that there is your parabola. Okay, that's your parabola. Was better when it didn't disappear halfway through. Okay, y equals x squared. Now they're saying they want us to find the equation of the tangent to the curve at the point x is 1, 1. So at this point here, there is a tangent, a straight line that dust touches the graph. But do you agree that if I use f dashed of x at x equals 1, I find the equation of the blue the blue graph, the y equals x squared at x equals 1. But the tangent, which just touches the graph at that point, is going to have the same gradient. So therefore, m of the straight line is going to be f dashed of x at x equals 1. Okay, do you understand? These two points here have got exactly the same gradient because that's the definition of a tangent at a point is that it touches that graph. And the only way you can just touch that graph at that point is if they have the same gradient. Okay, so therefore we can say, okay, that if we've got y equals x squared, then we can find f dashed of x or dy by dx. dy by dx is going to be what? It bring it through, it becomes 2x. So the gradient, okay, the gradient of that line at that point is 2x, okay? So, right, do you understand that? We're finding dy by dx is 2x, 
Okay. So we're saying, um, that is the equation of the gradient. That is the equation of the gradient for the whole curve. So now we want to know what the, the gradient is at that actual specific point. So what we're going to do is we're going to let x equal 1. If we let x equal 1, then you will find out that m is equal to 2 times by 1, which is 2. So the gradient of this red line, okay, the gradient of this red line is actually going to be 2. Okay, m equals 2 at x equals 2. It's because of the fact that x equals 2 that we get the gradient of that specific tangent. Obviously, if we had a different tangent along different points, we would substitute different x values and then get a different gradient, okay? So therefore, we can say that we've got y is equal to 2x plus c, okay? That is our equation. We know the point is 1 and 1, so we can substitute in. We can go 1 is equal to 2 times by 1 plus c, so c is obviously equal to negative 1. So the equation of this line, this red line, is y is equal to 2x minus 1. So it should actually have cut the graph at minus 1. Okay, so do you understand how you can use tangents or equations of tangents to find points on curves, okay? Or the that you can use the derivative to find the equation of the gradient of the tangent, okay? Sure, okay, so let's talk about calculation of turning points. If you have a graph, any graph, so let's say we've got a parabola, let's start with the parabola. What is the gradient at that point there? At that exact point there, that's a turning point. What is happening? Do you agree that if I drew a tangent to that line, that tangent would be parallel with x-axis, right? So the tangent is parallel to the x-axis. So what does it mean? It means that this gradient is zero. At that point there, that point, exact point there of the turning point, the gradient is zero. Just before it, it would have been negative and just after it would be positive. So therefore, I, and this is a turning point, do you agree? And at every turning point, the tan gradient of the tangent is going to be zero. So that means that if I find the x values that all have equal to zero, the gradients equal to zero at those points, then surely that those are the turning points. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to find f dashed of x and we're going to let it equal zero and solve for x. And those are going to be the x values of the turning point. That's going to give you the x values of the turning point, which you then need to substitute back into the original to get the y values. So you sub it back into original. Sub back into original. And grade 12s, if you're ever scared or confused when you're doing differentiation, you don't know where to sub back into, if you sub back into the original equation, there is a 99% probability that you're getting the sum right. Okay, so it says that calculate the turning points of the graph of the function 2x cubed minus 9x squared plus 12x minus 15. Okay, so I'm going to draw this just to give us some perspective. Okay, what do we know? We know that it's a large positive, it goes through minus 15. That's all we know so far, it goes through minus 15. Okay, that's all we know. Now we want to find the turning points of the graph, okay? So what do we do? We're going to factorize. We're going to go f dash of x is equal to. So when we do this, remember the 3 goes to the front, so it becomes 3 times by 2 x squared. Minus the 2 goes to the front, becomes 9 times by 2x. 2 minus 1 is 1, so it's fine. Plus 12, and the 15 goes away. Okay. Which means we've got 6x squared minus 9 times 2 is 18x plus 12. So this is the equation for the gradient. That is the equation for the gradient. Okay. Equation for the gradient. Now, what did we say? We said the gradient at the turning point is zero. M at TP 
equals zero. So we're not going to find the values of x that make this zero. So we're going to factorize it really. So the first thing I'm going to do is divide by six because that's a common factor. So you end up with x squared minus 3x plus 2. Okay, and we need to solve that for zero. We need to find out when this equals zero. Okay, when this equals zero. So you get x and x. The factors are 2 and 1, and they're both negative. Um, is that true? No, they're both the same, and the one's positive and the other one's negative. Oh, that sucks. Sorry, the reason it sucks is because it's actually going to be a formula question. Let me think about this. Plus tells you both the same, and they're both, no, I'm being an idiot. I'm being an idiot. So if it becomes x minus 2, x minus 1, therefore x equals 2 or x equals 1. So now we know it cuts at x equals 1 and x equals 2. So it obviously does something here, oh, or maybe something the way. Um, okay, it obviously does something there between them. We know it cuts at 15, so it must do a negative 15. So it must do something along here, but then we don't know. We don't know what happens. Okay, so those, are, sorry, those are my turning points. Oh, no wonder. Those are my turning points. So somewhere, oi. Somewhere along these lines, sorry, I lost track of what I was doing and I thought those were my factors, but those are my turning points. Somewhere along here, these are going to turn. So we now need to substitute back into the original to find the y values of the turning points. Okay, that makes more sense. So now, our original was y is equal to 2x cubed minus 9x squared plus 12x minus 15. We need to find out what the y values are when these are x, okay? So first thing we're going to do is let x equal 1. Seems easier. So we've got 2 times 1 cubed minus 9 times by 1 squared plus 12 times by 1 minus 15. So it becomes 2 minus 9 plus 12 minus 15. 2 minus 9 is minus 7 plus 12 minus 15 is minus 3, which is equal to minus 10. Okay, so what are we saying? We're saying that when x equals 1, y equals minus 10. Okay, so that's one point. Okay, let me just check. 2 times 1 minus 9 squared plus 12 times 1 minus 15. Okay, so it's 2, 9 times 1 is minus 9, so minus 7, plus 12, minus 15, minus 3, that's right. Okay, so there is a turning point. Okay, then what else do we have? When x equals 2, what do you have? When x equals 2, what do we have? And I need space. So let's erase this writing up here. So I've got space to write over here. Okay, so this point we've got when x equals okay, when x equals two, we've got f of two, f of two is two times by two cubed minus nine times by two squared plus twelve times by two minus fifteen. 2 cubed is 8 times by 2 is 16 minus 2 squared is 4 times by 9 is 9 fours are 36 plus 24 minus 15. 16 minus 15 is 1 minus 36 minus 20 plus 24. Let's just work out the difference. It's a 2 and a 1, which is negative 11. So that there is at negative 11 is a turning point. So therefore, this graph is doing this, wee, wee, and then back up. Okay, it's turning here, it's turning here, and then it's going back up there. Sure, okay, so that is how you would work out the turning points of a graph using differentiation.
Okay, so do you agree we now know how to use the factor theorem to find out where this graph would be cutting the x-axis? And then we can also use differentiation to find out where it turns. And we also know, okay, that's it. So let's talk about sketching graphs, okay? First of all, we're going to have to determine the value of the y-intercept. Okay, that's pretty obvious because that's the constant you'll see at the end, your or d, constant, okay? Next, you determine the x intercepts by factorizing like we did with the factor theorem. Then we're going to find the turning points by deriving and then we're going to determine the y coordinates above the turning points by substituting back into the original and then you can draw the graph. That's how easy this is. Okay. Now it seems easier when said than done so let's work through it nice and slowly. So it says draw the graph of g of x is equal to minus x cubed plus 6x squared minus 9x plus 4. So I'm going to say, okay, well, the cool thing is we know that it cuts the y-axis, the y-cut is 4, okay? Now, I think before I go into differentiation, I'm going to find the x-cuts. And how do I find the x cuts? Basically, I'm going to factorize this. And what do we use? We use a factor theorem. So we're going to try g of 1. G of 1 is going to be minus 1 cubed plus 6 times 1 squared minus 9 times 1 plus 4, which becomes minus 1 plus 6 minus 9 plus 4. Okay, so minus 1 plus 6 is going to be 5. Minus 9 plus 4 is minus 5. Yay, it works. G of 1 is equal to 0. So therefore, we know that x minus 1 is a factor. Okay, so now we can factorize this using that. Okay, we've got minus x cubed plus 6x squared minus 9x plus 4 is equal to x minus 1. Bracket, x goes into the last term minus x squared times. Minus 1 goes into plus 4, minus 4 times. Now, this times this gives me x squared. Do we agree? Minus 1 times minus x squared gives me x squared. This times this random thing here, which we are going to call plus kx, will give me hopefully 6x squared. So what do we have? We've got this here is x squared, and that becomes kx times by x, and it equals, sorry, it equals 6x squared. Uh, it has to equal 6x squared. Okay, it has to equal. There's your sum. So now another way of writing it, just to make it easier for you to understand, is going to be x squared plus kx times by x has to equal 6x squared. Right? There you go. You've got x squared plus a kx squared is equal to 6x squared. So do you agree that cancels with that and leaves your kx squared is equal to 5x squared. Therefore, k has to equal 5. Yay! So now I know that this is 5. So now what do we have? Let's, let's write that down. So we've got it equals my x minus 1 and then minus x squared plus 6x squared minus 4. It's not a 6, it's a 5. Oh, I'm sorry, I get irritated myself. It's a 5. Okay, now we need to factorize this bit. Okay, we need to factorize this. So that's horrible. I don't like that minus in the front. So I'm taking a minus here. And you're left with minus x minus 1, x squared plus 5x plus 4. So do you agree that it becomes x minus 1, and then we have to factorize? So it becomes obviously 4 and 1, plus and plus. Remember, there's a minus here. Okay. So now, do you agree, therefore, we can say that our factors are going to be, well, let's just have a look so far. We've got x plus 4, x plus 1, and x minus 1. Okay, so if I times that minus n, I'm going to end up with x minus 1 and then 1 
minus x and then x plus 4. Okay, I'm just times the minus into this bracket over here because that's what I've got removed from. So then do you agree that my x cuts are x is equal to 1, x is equal to minus 4, and x equals 1 again? x equals 1. Not a big deal. We like that. Okay, so now we've got the x cuts. Now we need to do the differentiation and we need to do... Um, we need to do differentiation and we need to do the find the turning points. So grade 12, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to derive this for you. I'm going to find f dashed of x for you just to help you. And then what I'd like to treat to do you do is that you just keep this frozen on your screen or you quickly write it down or you may yes take a photograph of it with your cell phone. And then I would like you to try and finish the sum for tomorrow. Okay, finish the sum for tomorrow. It's not long. Try and finish it and see how you do. Okay, so we're finding now the derivative of this. So if, oh sorry, it's a g, g dashed of x is going to be, remember to bring the 3 to the front becomes minus 3x squared, 2 to the front becomes plus 2 times 6 is 12x minus 9. There you go. So now I have at it grade 12. I want you now to use this find it where it cuts the x-axis and then I want you to draw the graph and come back tomorrow and see if you got it right. Have a wonderful day.